Hello viewers, you're watching with Matos and I'm your host Kashantakal. Since the US has retrieved their forces from Afghanistan in 2021, it has marked the end of 20 years of bloodshedding war in Afghanistan, but it also marks the return of the Taliban regime in the country. The Taliban is known for the suppression of the basic human rights like right to education, freedom of speech, etc. This kind of suppression is especially imposed on the women of the country. Many Afghans fearing the oppressive regime fled Afghanistan. Recently in Afghanistan, Taliban has restricted women and the girls of the country from working, going to public places like universities, schools, parks, gyms, etc. Let's have a quick discussion with the diplomats and experts to get to know their point of view on the issue. Taliban has banned the women and the girls of the country from using the public places like parks, gyms, universities, schools. How do you see this action by the same Taliban government who earlier this year promised its citizens in front of the whole world that they are going to provide them with full security development and now it's just a fake promise by Taliban? A couple of things. Number one, going back to my previous answer, this is exactly the type of governance that we would expect from a body that is uninterested in the administration of the country, but rather in governing uh, social mores, public behavior, et cetera, et cetera. Um, number two, I think it's also reflective of and indicative of uh, divisions within the Taliban itself, uh, which we're getting kind of second and third hand reflections of. Um, there are generational differences within the Taliban. There are ideological differences within the Taliban. Some are more hardcore. Um, those more hardcore and tend to be older elements uh, are frankly on top right now. But there's also a younger kind of reformist wing of the Taliban that we also hear the Taliban talking about how they will secure the, the safety of the citizenry of Afghanistan, how they will construct an inclusive government, government um, and reach out to other non-Taliban stakeholders in the power structure in Afghanistan. And we've seen that every time that those types of promises are made, whether it be for political accommodation, uh, whether it be for a relaxation of uh, public policing and social mores, uh, that very quickly and very harshly gets um, pushed down. And in that way, the Taliban that we're seeing today, at least in power, is very much a continuity of the Taliban we saw back in the 1990s. Girl child marriage is a significant issue in Afghanistan where it is happening at an immense scale. What do you see the reason behind it? Is it due to the lack of resources, the poverty in the country because of which the parents have been forced to take this action? Let's be clear that this is an issue that it transcends the Taliban period of governance. Um, actually, both the um, Karzai and Ghani administration dealt with this and passed uh, reforms about uh, age of marriage, right? And also about um, consent uh, for marriage. So this is a long-standing cultural issue that predates and inevitably will post-date the Taliban. Um, to a certain extent, one could put it down to culture, although the big question whenever you put it down to culture is whose culture, which culture are we talking about? Because um, clearly this is a patriarchal uh, value that's being imbibed. Um, also, you brought up in your question about poverty, uh, the, the situation that we see in terms of Afghanistan essentially being cut out of the global economic order and, and a poor country being even further impoverished, which is exacerbating the situation. Um, yeah, all of these fit into that matrix of, of this issue, not only of, uh, frankly, what is child marriage, but uh, violence against women, um, issues of consent, um, things that, that are highly problematic in Afghanistan. The women of the country have been restricted in the workplaces, even in the NGOs, because of which some aid funding organizations for the time being have stopped providing fund to the Afghanistan people, which because of which I can say that the whole Afghan population has been suffering. How do you see this action by the aid funding organization? Is it a correct step in accordance to you? How is it? find it incredible uh, about the short memory we have because we were in exactly the same position in 1999. Um, this exact same thing happened where the Taliban became increasingly restrictive, uh, uh, in particular women's rights uh, in the late 1990s, um, not only in terms of their public pronouncements and public policing of Afghan society, but also to the extent of passing similar types of restrictions about women working for NGOs. So number one, it's not just that this has happened before, but this exact same thing has happened before in the exact same place 
with the same organization, if not the same people. Um, circling back to my first answer about how the Taliban is not actually interested in administration, they'd like to kind of subcontract this out to international NGOs or perhaps the UN or an international donor. Um, here we see the, the tension in that um, because they would very much like those international NGOs, the UN, et cetera, et cetera, to provide those services and public goods. Um, but they would also like this done on their terms, um, which obviously comes to an issue about values, which is exactly what we're seeing here about international NGOs saying, well, if, if half of our workforce can't participate, then we're not going to play ball. Afghanistan faces one of the most severe colds in the world. On the top of that comes a lot of health problems because of which Taliban has recently granted rights to its women of the country to work in the health sector as nurses and uh, health supporters, not in the administration staff, but as just nurses and the health supporters. Do you think that somewhere this is a ray of light for the women of Afghanistan under the dark world of Taliban? I would not read this as the Taliban relaxing or making an ideological change to their position on governance. This is a practical accommodation to the situation in which they find themselves. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say that they're going to have to make more and more of those types of practical accommodations because uh, the situation that they face is going to deteriorate over time without mm -hmm. securing foreign backing, without securing money coming in from outside the country. What is the air of Taliban, Afghanistan in American politics? How how the Biden administration is taking care of it? What is the air of Taliban and Afghanistan in America right now? There's very little interest politically in the United States to engage uh, uh, with Afghanistan generally, with the mm -hmm. Afghans, uh, with the Taliban. Mm -hmm. um, we had the massive evacuation in mm -hmm. 2021. We all saw the horrendous photos, you know, of American um, Air Force jets taking off from the tarmac at, at Kabul with Afghan refugees hanging on the outside. After every other foreign war the United States has had where there's been a large influx of refugees, there's been some normalization of those refugee status in the United States. There's been something called a, an Adjustment Act. So, for example, after Vietnam, Mm -hmm. um, we had the Vietnam Adjustment Act, which regularized Vietnamese uh, refugees here in the United States. There is an act in Congress which has been proposed and will not pass, which just goes to reflect the mood in Washington um, of indifference to Afghanistan. Um, they have uh, congressionally appointed an Afghanistan War Commission, mm -hmm. which is to look into the American involvement in, in Afghanistan. That will be a multi-year undertaking. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it just goes to show that um, except for basically cheap political points, mm -hmm. uh, Afghanistan is uh, not cared for by the American political class. And more generally, in terms of the public, um, I think most of the public really don't remember Afghanistan. They think if it erupts into their, their consciousness, it was a tragedy. It's mm -hmm. terrible. We have these refugees. But that's about the extent of it. How do you see the future of the young Afghan women under Taliban? I would say that the the, the number one thing we have to uh, re remember and question is um, this hiatus of Taliban governance is viewed by many um, as the end to a war that's gone on for 43 years. Hmm. Um, I'm not quite convinced that we've seen the end of the war. This could well be a hiatus of the war. Mm -hmm. We saw a hiatus of the war the last time the um, Afghans were, or the Taliban were in control of Afghanistan in the late 1990s, where, where things kind of died down and then obviously it flared back up. Um, you know, for Afghans themselves, one would hope that the violence would be ended. And indeed, you can see that's in part while there hasn't been more resistance, the Taliban regime is just a war weary people. We have to remember that more than 75% of the Afghan population was born after the Soviet invasion in 1979. So this is a nation that individually and collectively has been defined by war.